goddess makes a way. God makes a way. God always makes a way. When a backs her, when a backs her against the wall, and it looks as if it's all over, God always makes a way. And I'm sitting here, and I'm sitting here, only because God made a way. I'm alive today, only because God made a way. God always makes a way. He makes a way. God always makes a way. When I back, sir, when I back, sir, against the wall. And it looks as if it's all over. God always makes a way. And I'm singing here, and I'm singing here. Only because God made a way. And I'm dancing now. Only because God made a way. He moves mountains. He caused walls to fall in His power. He performs miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And I'm sitting here only because God made a way. Now I'm sitting here only because God made the way. He moves mountains. He caused walls to fall in His power. He performs miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And I'm dancing now only because God made a way. And I'm dancing now only because God made a way. And I'm smiling here only because He made a way. And I'm smiling here only because God made a way. And I'm singing right now. Only because daddy made a way. <clears throat> hey people, it's a chapter a day to keep you going, to boost your faith, to let you know that God really loves you. And he has a plan and a purpose for your life. And the only way you can live that life is to get back to him and ask him how. He has given us a manual, which is the Bible, for us to have access to easily be able to make it out. But we still need to connect to him because there are some things that he's going to tell us personally that are not not like they're not found in the Bible, but they're not spelled out clearly. So, for example, if God wants you to be in Japan, he's going to tell you literally, if he has to, that I want you to go to Japan, but it's not written in the Bible, right? But we know that they that are the sons of God, they led by God. They're led by the Spirit of God. They're led by the Spirit of God. They're the sons of God. And so, as a child of God, God leads you. So, it actually beats my imagination when people say things like, oh, um, the Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Of course, you are led to find a wife. So, either ways, the Holy Spirit is still there. Because if he does not lead you in your finding process, you just might not find the right person. That's not to say there is just this one right person for you on planet earth no don't get me wrong but there is a right person for you and only god can truly lead you as a man to find that person only god can truly guide you as a woman to be that person for that man so let god lead just be sold out to god just be sold out to the things of god just yield yourself fully to god and see what he's gonna do in your life people god is too good god is just just too awesome that's how it is so in a chapter a day we get to know we are in christ the power we possess the things we should and should not do so that we can get to live the christian life here on earth beautifully and end up spending eternity with god in heaven Mm Mhm. that's the whole idea we want to Live the Christian life here on earth beautifully and spread the kingdom vibe and still end up in heaven. That's how it's supposed to be. So on a chapter a day, what we do is we pray. We give birthday shout outs and prayers, which is called the birthday party. And then we read a chapter of the Bible and talk about it, which is called the Bible party. 
And of course, the Bible party doesn't just end at that. Sometimes we can have people talk on other things, maybe a message that God has blessed them with, maybe an exhortation, anything, something that is good, that is helpful, that is honest, that is true, that can cause people to be their best versions and get to the place where God wants them to be. We share all of that on the chapter at end. Okay? So let's go on with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this brand new day you've made. It's the day that you've made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. It's a beautiful day. Lord, we thank you for all the amazing things you've done in our lives. You're doing and you're still to do. We know that you're a faithful father. And when we come to you, you always give us just the very, very best. Because you are a great father. Because you are the best dad ever. So Lord, we thank you for all the amazingness and the awesomeness of your mighty works upon our lives. We just give you all the praise. We'll give you all the honor and adoration because you deserve it. Thank you, O Lord, for providing, protecting, for keeping us safe and secure. We give you all the praise, O Heavenly Father. Take preeminence, put now and forevermore. Father, we pray, O God, that you're going to speak to us today in a very special way. You know our heart's desires. You know all our needs. And only you can address it. As the message comes forth, O Lord, let it minister to each and every one of us at the point of our needs. So that your name and your name alone will be glorified as we get answers and live the life that you've ordained and purposed for us to live. Increase while I decrease. So it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen, felt, and heard throughout this session of the chapter today. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 We have prayed. Let's get the birthday party started. So let's see. Oh, our birthday book is right here. <clears throat> our birthday book. Is right here, right here, right here, right now, waiting for the Lord. Right, <coughs> right now, I'm waiting, 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 right here. Right now, I'm waiting for the Lord oh, right here. I'm trying to fix out something. I've mixed up some dates and days and stuff like that. So I wanted to fix it out before getting on to today. Today is the 26th of February. And a very special sister of mine was born today. Okay, people. So let's wish this people a happy birthday and give them a big 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 shout out i can't find my pencil okay happy birthday to mom aquande agnes mom aquande agnes we were actually in school together high school together we studied together it was great no university <laughs> we're in the university together we both studied together she's a very calm composed and quiet person but she's very wise very intelligent very smart okay so that's how I got to know her. And then the next person is Mr. Jamuto Betran. We got to connect on social media, I think on a mutual friend's post or on someone's page, a mutual friend's page. And uh, we just connected to each other because the way he was responding to, you know, I always get to connect to lots of people like that. Their comments, their posts, and because I'm a comments reader association person, so I always get to read comments and I get to see how when people see things the way I see them, when they understand them the way I understand them, or they have this really interesting and intriguing way of viewing a particular issue, I just go ahead and, and try to connect with them. I do the best I can to connect with them. And for the most part, I get favored because some of them kind of like connect back with me. And when we connect, we have a conversation I see how the vibe is and everything. We continue that conversation for a very long time. Mr. Jamuto Betran always, always gets to encourage me when he sees my post. He's like, you're doing good. Keep doing the good work. Don't give up. Don't back out. And sometimes when he sees some opportunities, he tries to connect me to those opportunities and all that. I'm really grateful to you, Mr. Betran. God bless you and bless your family in Jesus' name. And then the next person is Mam Viva Abaro Victoria. Mam Viva Abaro Victoria. We also connected on 
social media yes we connected on social media and then we're planning to see each other physically but we've not been able to do that i'm really grateful and she has this amazing group um i've forgotten the title but it has something to do with laugh you know so it if you i mean you need to get to that group you're going to almost laugh to your your heart out sometimes when i feel a little bit down i just go there and click on there and read a couple of messages and i'm just like poop revamped again you know that kind of thing if you go to that group you're going to be you're going to be thankful to me that i sent you them i'll kind of find the name i'm sure if i get it i'll put it in the comment section so you all can go take a peep take a look you know and mind you you might be addictive so you have to be someone who is very strong-willed so you don't stay there because the fun is a whole lot, but you have to be careful not to get addicted to all that is going on there. And she also, um, I think she sells a lot of African stuff, maybe African clothes and materials and stuff like that. I'm not so sure, but I'm sure she has something that is connected to that. Or she has someone who sews clothes very beautifully. I'm not sure which is it, but I know she has something that has to do with clothes. I don't know if it's just for females or it's unisex or it's for both male, female and children, but she's definitely going to put a link in here to make us know. She's a very nice person. And at some, sometimes I used to have some issues. So I'll be talking to her and she'll be listening to all my rants and my whatever craziness. And then she'll be like, don't worry, baby girl, you're going to be fine. You're going to get through this and all that. Thank you for being there always. And to Viva, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then the last but not the least is my sister, sister, sister from another mother, Jackie Phillips. Everybody, sound your trumpet for this amazing lady. Hooray, hooray, happy birthday to a sweet sister. This girl is hardworking, she's virtuous, she's pushful, she's courageous, she's adventurous like me. And I mean, like she's just a bundle of success going all around and happening, a bundle of happiness and joy going all around and happening. Jackie can be in a place and the place is boring. It's not even, impo it's impossicant. Bottom and Jackie are two parallel lines. They can't, they can't dwell together. She is so much, like she's enough fun to be with. She is smart. God, like this girl is smart. I mean, she's so, so down to earth. She's one person who is supposed to be like shoulders high, you know, kind of thing. But she's so down to earth. Sometimes you see her, you not even believe that she's the kind of person that she is. I just got drawn to her the first time I saw her. Her mom makes me pie. He used to love me pie. Oh, my God. So um, I always kind of went to the house a lot. And funny enough, whenever I went to the house, Jackie must find a way to give me meat pie. <laughs> so my love for her was definitely just going to be higher. You get, you get right? It's just normal. <laughs> so, yeah, I really, really love this girl. And she has a beautiful soul. She always wants to help people. She always wants to see that people are in good spirits. People are happy. I mean, every single time I went to their house, she's the one helping her mom to make pie. She's, I mean, like literally all of them in their house could make meat pie. All of them. But most of the times I went there, she was the one doing it. And she always be giving me, every time that I made an order for meat pie, she always gives me extra. Her mom always gives me extra, like... Oh my God, she's a sweet soul. She always likes to see people happy. If she sees someone going through a tough time or something, she does the best she can to be able to support the person in her own little way that she can. She's really like, I mean, like one really amazing sister, truly an amazing sister from another mother. Feels like we've known each other for forever, but we kind of got connected to each other when we were already all grown up. It's not like when we're young, 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 but... It feels like we've known each other for forever, like before we even came to planet Earth. Thank you so much, Jackie Felix, for being this amazing sister, for doing all that you do. And um, 
what else like just so many things i pray that god will answer your heart desires your inner heart desires that you've been asking him and crying and wetting your pillow for pray that he's going to answer them for you okay so let's go again happy birthday to mom aquande agnes happy birthday to mr jamuto betran happy birthday to auntie viva viva abara victoria and to jackie phillips my one and only sister pa excellence okay so let's pray for the birthday people that's exactly how we do it on a chapter a day on a chapter a day we call out the people pray for them we call out the people give them a shout out the ones we know give them a shout out the ones we don't know we just call out their names it's a good thing to want to see somewhere and you hear your friend saying some lady called your name on her live stream and she was saying happy birthday to you that's cool yeah it's cool so of course it's not just um when your name is on our birthday book we call it and give you a shout out we don't just give a shout out because we have to we give a shout out because we truly know you and we want people to know that you that we know but if we don't know you we still call your name and just say happy birthday to you so yes you can still give me your name on facebook and i'm going to put it in my birthday book but we would have to have a conversation a real conversation before i'll be able to give you a real real shout out like i'm giving for every other person you see i'm giving scenarios and quoting when they happen and how they happened I can't make that up for people. I can only truly say it when it's really there. So let's not get it twisted because I know some people might be like, my name is in your birthday book, but you didn't give me a shout out, shout out, shout out. It's because we've not communicated or we just got to know each other and then that was just it. We just added each other as friends and that was just it. So when Facebook gives me a pop up, I decided to write your name in my birthday book. So please forgive me for that. If I would have to write something about you on my birthday book and really say something about you, then we'll have to have communicated and related. Okay? Even just a little bit. But like I said, I know that most people that always connect to me, most of them always encourage me on what I do on social media, on Facebook. It's people that have seen what I do and they kind of like it and they kind of feel like they, they need to encourage me. So... For the most part, people who send me friends requests, that's mostly why they send it. But I who send requests to people, it's mostly because I saw their comments and their posts or something. You know, that's how I get to send friend requests to some people. I have to be intentional about who my friends are, who the people I live in my circle are. Like they said, if you are connected to wise people, you will be wise. But if you're connected to foolish people, it will lead you to destruction. That's what the Bible says. Believe it or not, it's true. Let's get praying for the for the birthday people so that we can finish the birthday party and hop right into the Bible party. Are you ready? When we used to be in Sunday school, they used to say something like, when you want to pray, put your hands together, bow down your head, close your eyes and talk to the Lord and talk to the Lord. <laughs> it used to be so interesting. Oh, so the school was really a great foundation. I'm glad I did have some of it, you know. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for all these amazing people who were born on this day. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you're going to bless them. Open the windows of God, uh, the windows of heaven upon their lives and rebuke every devourer, O oh God. Father, bless them beyond their reasonable understanding. Let them bless them and compass them like a shield round about. That no weapon formed or fashion against them shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. They shall be a blessing in their generation and beyond. Father, I pray, O oh God, because of the blessings that is going to overflow upon their lives, people who come in contact with them will literally be blessed because they'll rub off of this blessing that will be overflowing from their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I bring before you, O oh God, their activities oh god father i pray that you're going to bless their activities you're going to go before them and make every crooked path straight lord i pray oh god that you're going to cause them to be trailblazers space setters and world changers in the mighty name of jesus cause them to be inventors oh god and innovators in the mighty name of jesus in their areas of specialty oh lord father make them stand out you didn't create them to feed in you created them to stand out and i pray oh god that each and every one of them will be open and yield enough to you so that they'll be able to get to that place where they'll truly stand out at every point in time and people will see your good work
works in their lives and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to do and undo for them, O oh Lord. That you're going to do that which only you can do in their lives, way beyond what they can even ask or imagine. Thank you, King of Glory, because I know you always hear an answer. You're a faithful God. There is none like you in all the earth. Father, I pray, O oh God, that whatever they lead your hands on, you prosper because your word says so. Wherever they tread their feet upon you, give it to them as a possession. That you teach their hands to make well, teach their hands to battle, teach their fingers to war. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to disconnect them divinely from people that are going to cause them to retrogress or stagnate or things that are going to cause them to retrogress or stagnate and divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to be their best versions ever and be the people you desire them to be in their lives. Father, I pray, O oh God, that whenever they need help, help is going to show up because you're going to strategically position their destiny helpers to be able to put themselves in the right places at the right time to help them when they cry out for help. Lord, I pray that you're also going to open their eyes so that they will be strategically positioned for other people because they too are destiny helpers to some people. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you're going to guide their part. Lord, every single person gets that moment in their life, that place in their life where they feel like they want to give up, they want to back out, they don't want to do this anymore. Lord, I pray that when they get to that place, you're going to speak and they're going to hear you in a clean and clear and loud voice that would say, this is the way walk that we need. So they'll not stray the path, they'll stay on course and fulfill purpose in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, oh God, that you're going to cause them to get to the top. You're the one who leads one up and brings down another. That you're going to cause them to get to the top and permanently stay at the top because you teach them the strategies, the techniques, and the methods that are necessary and needed for them to stand and stay at the top permanently. Thank you, Lord God. Father, I pray, oh God, that you're going to cause money to make money in their pockets, blessings to make blessings in their life, favor to make favor in their life, to the glory of your name, even as you clothe them with a garment of praise, honor, and favor. Lord, I pray, answer those their in it, in it, in it, hard desires, those things that causes them to wet their pillows, oh Lord. I pray that you're going to meet them at every point of need in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, give them all that it takes to go and conquer their world in Jesus' name, we seal every prayer request with the blood of Jesus, knowing that you're God who always hears and answer prayers, and we know you've heard and answered us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 We seal the prayers. Amen. 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 With the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let it be so in their lives as we've prayed. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. In their lives. Let it be. Let every prayer come to life in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let their seasons be a season of laughter, rejoicing, singing, because you're going to pour out your Psalms 126 state upon their lives and you perfect all that concerns them. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's get straight on to the Bible party. Our Bible party for today is taken from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 24. And Deuteronomy chapter 6, and he has 25 verses, not 24. Deuteronomy chapter 6, and he has 25 verses. So let's start our reading. Are you ready, people? I hope you are. Ready or not, here I come. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you. Welcome, Mr. Ada Garrison. How are you today? Welcome, welcome, welcome. We just had a noise there, so I had to stop and start again. Okay, so let's get ready. The noise is done and dusted. I think so. Yeah, the noise is gone. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to, to possess it, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God, to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son, and thy son's sons, 
all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thine soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and, we, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house, and on thy gates. And it shall be, when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sway unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and godly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and wells digged, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not, and when thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are round about you. Sorry people, some sounds are coming. I don't know if you're getting it as loud as I'm getting it, but I'm so sorry. So let's go. Then beware Lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods, of the gods of the people which are round about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God amongst you. Let the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee, and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God, as ye tempted him in Massar. Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God, and his testimonies, and his statutes, which he had commanded thee. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord sway unto thy fathers, to cast out all thine enemies, from before thee, as the Lord had spoken. And when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What mean that what mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God had commanded you? Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and the Lord showed signs and wonders great and score, great and sore upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence, that he might bring us into in oh no. And he brought us out from thence, that he might bring us in to give us And he brought us out from thence, that he might bring us in, to give us the land which he sway unto our fathers. And the Lord... Are you kidding me right now? What are these people doing? Can they just stop? 
And he brought us out from thence that he might bring us in to give us the land which he swore unto our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always that he might preserve us alive at it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he had commanded us. Okay. One of my students is here always in saying, I love you. That's the easiest thing they can say in English. <sighs> mm. <laughs> okay, so let's go. Um, so God is always interested when we learn all that he has taught us. In fact, nobody likes to to see their children grow differently from the way they've trained them, from the way they've taught them, right? If you teach your children today good manners, you teach them good morals, you teach them good good everything, whatever you teach them that is good, and they grow up and don't do it, you'll feel bad, right? So, of course, God says, this. Um, Moses was telling the people that this statutes and this commandment that God has given us, we need to teach those that are coming after us. We don't just have to have it for us. We need to teach those that are coming after us. And of course, you can't give what you don't have. So how do we get to understand this word? How do we get to know this word so that we can be able to teach to the next generations? By studying it. We can only get to know the word to be able to pass it on to another person by studying it. Sorry. We are always only sorry for that. We are only supposed to be able to get it right when we're doing the, the, the right thing. Like we study the word. If you study the word, you'll be able to give it. You can't give out what you don't have. If you don't have it, you can't give it out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the truth. You can only give what you have. So basically these commandments were being taught and of course sometimes this commandments will become a part of you like you become a lifestyle because you've read them and you're doing them when you read them and you don't just read them like you're reading a storybook you read them and 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 they get to you and you understand them and you start leaving them you start doing them it will become a part of you it will become a part of you there are some things that i just do normally that um I learned them and I started doing them and now it's just a normal thing to me laughing is a normal thing to me smiling is a normal thing like it's reflex I don't have to struggle to smile I mean I'm talking basically of even when I'm going through tough times like really tough times no jokes about it I still somehow just laugh and smile it has become a part of me was I born like that of course not people think I'm a smiling beetle not smelling beetle, not whatever they call it. People think I'm a smiling beetle because I smile and laugh a lot. Some people literally ask me, some of my friends literally ask me like, Princess, do you have problems? Do you have troubles? I'm on planet earth for crying out loud. Of course. They say offenses will come. They say um, challenges will come. Trying times will come. Then they, they, the Bible says when, when. In, See, when means that it's, it has a certainty. It has a degree of certainty. It would happen. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. When you pass through the fire, it shall not burn you. When you pass through this, it shall not overwhelm you. It will happen. It is just a matter of time. It is a, if it has not happened to you yet, it will. It will. As long as you're still on earth, it would happen. Welcome, Mr. Lunji Navish. Welcome, welcome, welcome. God bless you, sir. I really, really do appreciate you for stopping by. I hope that you're doing great. I hope family is great. I hope ministry is great too. God bless you for stopping by. So you need to get there. You need to get to be aware of that. But then you have to make a choice. I remember hearing someone say, it's a choice to be happy or be angry. And I was like, are you kidding me? So someone is going to kill your something or whatever you know someone is going to do you really bad like hurt you really bad and you choose to be happy are you are you serious but yeah, of course it's it's the truth it was the truth i just didn't want to accept it but it was the truth is ain't it true that it's a choice to be happy or sad the thing has happened you cannot undo it the person has hurt you you can't undo the hurt it's already there he has already done it 
So you make the choice to whether focus on the hurt and then hate the person or choose to be happy and heal and move on. It is your choice, darling. Are we negating the fact that you got hurt? No. But are we going to stay on the hurt and focus on it and sit there and have all this pity party? No. That's what the devil wants. But that's not what you should do. Shock him. Surprise him. Oh yeah. So now you see me smiling all the time, laughing all the time, and you'll be thinking like, this girl doesn't have challenges. This girl doesn't have tough moments. Ha. Believe you me. Believe you me. I cry some issues away. <laughs> oh yeah, I do cry sometimes. You know, I just don't know how to get angry. But... I guess sometimes when I'm angry, it's kind of expressed in my words. It's kind of expressed in my tone if I'm talking to you. So I kind of feel awkward to address issues when I'm, when, when I'm angry because I just might say some things in a kind of way or with a kind of tone that is not very good. So I'm, I'm still working on that. So I try as much as possible to be quiet when I'm angry, not to talk. Say anger is one letter short of danger. I don't want to do danger. <laughs> okay, so God was saying that they needed to teach the children, the children's children, when they go to the land that they possess, when God has given them rest, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's sons, all the days of thy life, that thou mayest be prolonged. And that is the good thing about it. Most of the things that God tells us to do, the reasons why he tells us to do them, is because there are some, there are some blessings that are attached to doing those things. That is for our good. Who doesn't want long life? I want to live as long as long. I want to see my children and children's children's children. If Christ tarries to come, yes, I want to be that old and see these people and i mean i want to i desire to i really want to live long on earth and so the bible is telling me the strategies and the techniques on how to live long on earth is to follow god's principles follow his statutes and his precepts and teach them to my sons and my son's sons and my son's son's sons should teach them you know and the generation just keeps teaching but they'll not be able to pass down whatever they don't have i can't pass on to my children what i don't have i can't pass on to the people around me what i don't have you can only give what you have So you see, that's where studying the word of God can't be overemphasized and it's non-negotiable because if you have to have something that you train the next generation with, you're going to train your children with, you will need to have it yourself. And like they say, you can't be telling your children to do what you say, but not what you do. It's not possible. Children learn more by watching than listening. Even science has proven it. It's not only children, for human beings. There's some cartoons I watched when I was a baby. When I was not a baby. Not a baby. When I was a child. Like when I was a toddler. When I was a kid, you know. I was really young. I could be basically like three, two, three years old. And I watched these cartoons and I can remember them. I can remember even some of the songs. I can remember their faces. I can remember their names and everything till date. I can remember some of the stories till date because I was watching them. But there are things that I studied like, let me be fair with myself. Things that I studied like maybe two years ago, three years ago. I'm not sure I can remember a lot of them. I can remember the ones that I've used, that I've practicalized them and I'm using them. I've rem I can remember those ones very, very perfectly. But there are some things that I studied that I couldn't remember. Thorax of a cat, the thorax of a whatever, of a grasshopper, and all those things. Like, I can't even remember. I mean, a tiny wincy bitsy. But those are things that I was like two years old, I can remember them. Because I saw them. So if you want your children to learn better... All this precept and statutes and judgments and whatever God was giving or God is giving through his word, you need to study them and leave them. They need to become a practical reality in your life. 
My children will not have a difficulty with smiling because I'm always smiling. I know that for sure. Mm. I'll tell them how good smiling is. And they will see how young I am. You know, it's one of the ways to remain consistently young. I believe it because it's happening to me. I kind of look way younger than I was when I was younger. Yeah, so I sent a picture of mine. I was looking like some little, like I was older. I was looking older than I am right now. Literally. I was looking older than I am right now. That's strange. It's weird. Like it's so weird. But it's the truth. That's how it is. So yeah, um, basically, if we have to teach our children and our children's children these precepts and these statues, we ourselves have to know them and they have to be a part of our lives. We have to be yielded to them to be able to experience what is in it so that we're telling other people, we're telling them confidently. When I talk about my stories and my testimonies and I'm encouraging people to be this or be that, it's because I've experienced it. So I talk with it, I talk about it with confidence. I talk about it with, 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 with conviction. I'm not just talking about it because I heard A talking about it or I heard Apostle Paul talking about it or I heard about Peter talking about it. Those people are even of the old. So there's a possibility of you telling me that, oh, the, the, the people of the old, their time is different. I am in this our time, darling. I'm in this time and day. I'm in this age. I'm in this generation. And I'm telling you that it works because it has worked for me. So I have that authority to speak about it confidently because I am a living testimony of such things. So you see, that's basically how it goes. And so when you obey the word of God, when you teach your children and your children's children, it brings long life, not only to you, but also to the children as well. So preaching the word of God, studying the word of God is very important. Having a personal relationship with God is very, very important. There's no way we can overemphasize that, but we know that is important we should know that say so, yeah therefore israel and observe to do it that it may be well with thee and that ye may increase mightily as the lord your god and father had promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey see what i see when sometimes we get mad about we get mad at our children because they ask us a lot of questions our generation we never ask our parents questions if they tell you go left you just go left if they tell you right you just go right you you not even conceive it in your head before even pronouncing it with your mouth, like to ask questions. Daddy, why are you telling me to go to the left? I said, you can't even conceive that kind of thing. It's not even possible in our generation. You couldn't conceive it. But now every child, every single thing you tell them, they need to know the why. Which I think is a good thing rather, because if I know why I'm doing something like maybe the consequences or the benefits or the disadvantages, I'll be able to make an informed decision from there. Not just, just doing it because I'm afraid that that is going to give me a spanking or that is going to give me a whooping. No, I'm doing it because I have an understanding that this thing can destroy my future. Okay. So if I do this, I might get pregnant. If I get pregnant, I wouldn't go to school. If I don't go to school, I've missed a year. I might not recover from that because who knows? You just never know. And then that is also de depriving me from being the person that I would have been if I was not sitting back and taking care of a child, you know, give them those things and give them the present, the consequences of the present and the consequences of how it can affect their future. And and they will be able to take the informed decisions. Do your part. Do your part. Don't leave them to chance. Don't leave them to learn from their friends. Don't leave them to learn from the internet. Don't leave them to learn from their teachers. You are the first and basic teacher of your child's life. See, I understand a lot of people that when they give birth to their children, they want to get away from work and stay home and take care of their children. Some people laugh at them, but I say that that's, I give those people kudos. And I'm praying, I'm asking God for the grace that by the time I should be giving birth to my children, I should be working. I should have my business, my personal business, so that I can do it the way I, I should, so that I can be able to take care of my children. Yes, I want to. I want to be in my children's life. You, it doesn't just happen. You don't just happen to be in the children's life when you feel like, when you desire. You know, you let your children be, you just let them go however they want to go and then when they're teenagers you want to forcefully be in their lives it doesn't work like that 
It doesn't work like that. You build the bond. You grow with them in the relationship. And then when you get to that point, you're already connected with them. And so they feel comfortable with telling you some kinds of things. I, I mean that I could tell my dad every single thing. From the boy who's talking to me, from the boy that I kind of feel a little bit thing for, for the one that I don't feel nothing at all, for the one that is chasing me and is so much fun, I could tell my dad literally every single thing. From the one that I went and slept at the house, from the one that I, I would tell my dad every single thing. Why? Because we had that relationship. You're not just going to leave me to chance and then I don't even trust you. Like there's no way I can talk to you. You don't even give me that opportunity. You don't even have that avenue where I can even talk to you. I can even trust you. And then you just wake up one beautiful morning and you expect everything to be beautiful. And I should just be talking to you. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. And so when we do all these things and learn all these things, it increases us mightily. There are just lots and lots of benefits of why we should follow the word of God and fulfill them and, and listen to the commandments and precepts and live by them. These are some of the benefits. You will increase mightily. You would have long life. Who doesn't want to have increase in benefit? Who doesn't want to increase? I want to increase in every area of my life. My YouTube channel, my Facebook, my Instagram, my TikTok, wherever. I want to increase on all my social media platforms. I also want to increase financially. I also want to increase spiritually. I also want to increase socially. I also want to, I want to increase in every area of my life. And God is telling me that the only way I can increase in all those areas in my life is studying the word of God. What is stopping me then? I know that all the benefits that I'm desiring is going to come from this thing. How is it even possible that I'm not going to do it? I'm going to step on it as boom, like, you know, with the speed of light, like flash. See, so we have to be very, very um, um, keen on these things. So when our children are asking us all those why, 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 rather than get irritated, sit them down and tell them the reasons why. Yes, you're telling her not to do this because this is what it does. Because this is how it makes you come out. Because this is how it presents you to people. Because talk to them. Talk to them. Have that conversation. Have that conversation with them. It's important. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Every single thing that you have, love God with it. Love God with it and let these words be in your heart that thou shalt teach them diligently unto their children. You know, if you teach person thing where you know, no, you can only teach someone something that you know. Example, if they tell me now to go and be teaching somebody about the, the parts, the, 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 the parts, the in, inside parts of the body, like those intestines, thorax and or whatever whatever those things are yeah i'm just mixing up the names right now i would be so lost totally and completely lost but if they tell me to talk about things that are related to media i would so sit you down and would have a real conversation but if you're putting me to have a science conversation i'll be so lost i'll probably have nothing basic to even talk about maybe you know because that is not my area because i've not studied it because i'm not into it like i'm not doing it i'm not but i'm talking every day on social media i'm talking every day on this live stream i'm talking to people i'm encouraging people it's it's my thing so you wake me up from sleep, I'll be able to encourage someone. You wake me up from sleep, I'll be able to talk. I'll be able to comfort someone. I'll be able to encourage someone. I'll be able to give someone an idea as to what they're going through. Maybe a hurt, maybe a downtime. I'll be able to say something. Seriously, it's God. It's God. It's, it's not by my power. It's God. Because sometimes I don't even know how I do it. And in trying to figure it out, I just realized it's God. Because nobody can really do it by themselves. I've been doing these things even when I wasn't really, um, I became born again, but I was not so into the things of God. 
you know. But when I became fully connected to the things of God, my media wow. appearance and my media abilities just skyrocketed. So he says that, and then you, you would put these things in your heart. When they're in your heart, they become a part of you. And then you teach them now diligently to other people. And thou shalt talk them, talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. And when thou walkest by the way. And when thou liest down. And when thou risest up. See, I mean, you should talk about those things. You... You see, you're a child of God. You should talk about the things of God every single time. Like I said, you can't talk with me for up to like 15 minutes. Sometimes for some people, some cases, 15 minutes is even much. I don't say something about God. I'm not connected to God. Sometimes even my greetings itself is talking God. Because some of my exclamations and all that, they are just scriptures. <laughs> Originally it was high, but later on it became so fun and so sweet. I just had to keep decreeing them, you know. So it says that when you're waking up, when you're sleeping, when you're walking by the street, you should be talking about it. You should be talking about these things. You could tell them in a story. You could tell them in your testimony. You could tell them in how God dealt with you, how it happened for you. That woman just went, which Bible school did she go to? Nothing. Which training did she go to? Nothing. She just met Jesus at the world and she had this encounter and she became a preacher. What was her message? Come and see what the Lord has done for me. Come and see a man who knows me more than anybody else come and see the man who changed my life sometimes it's even hard for people to talk to us or believe us when we talk because they're not seeing any changes in our lives they're not seeing no difference because we ourselves are not even leaving the word but when we leave the word people will want to know what is making it possible for us to be able to leave the word and then you can tell them that it's all God that is God who gave you the grace. Because I know when I didn't have God leading me and guiding me, I knew how it was tough. But now it's so simple. It's so easy. I do it effortlessly. That sometimes people think it's as easy as it seems. I've seen people's jobs as well that they do it so effortlessly and they make it look so easy. And then you just try it for like an hour or more. And you'll be thanking God that that was not your calling. You'll be saying, Yahweh, I worship you for making me a media personality instead of a doctor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be a frontlet between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. Okay, so these are some of the things and some of the ways that the Lord is giving us some of the techniques and strategies that the Lord is giving us that can help us to have the word in our hearts so that the word should be hid in our hearts and, and will not sin against him so that the word will be hid in our hearts and we'll be able to live by it. Um, I've been saying for a while that I'm going to print some scriptures and put them around my house, but the way my house is looking for it, but that is not supposed to be an excuse. I'd have to do the best I can to find some of those scriptures, about 10 of them and just paste them around my door, paste them like on something on my phone somewhere, maybe on my sticky notes so that I can be looking at them from time to time. We need to put these things there. When you put these things everywhere, you'll be able to see them all the time. And it would help you to actually get them soaked in your spirit. And you'll be able to leave them. To be able to leave those things that you've read. Who would listen to or watch the same thing or look at the same thing over and over and over. Say a week or a month or something. And that will not even become a part of them. It's not even possible. It's not even possible. They say it's 21 days. If you do something consistently for 21 days, it becomes a part of you. Some people say 60 something days, but I think 21 days is more like it because I've done a lot of things for some time and it just became a part of me. Some of them, even before 21 days, I was already feeling like if I don't do this thing, a part of me is out. It's like somebody's ripping off my heart or somebody's cutting my hand off or something. It just felt awkward. It felt not normal that. I am not doing that thing. 
sometimes I fight with myself. Even when I'm feeling awkward, like I'm feeling like sick in my body, right? And I'm lying on my bed and it's getting close to a chapter a day. And I'm like, God, I can't miss the chapter a day. Lord, do something. And my body is telling me, princess, you're not going to be able to do it today. It's just going to be one day. You can actually let it go. It's just one day. And then I just say, Lord, I really, I really, I desperately want to do a chapter a day today. You have to do something. And then it doesn't feel like the Lord is doing anything though. But when I consciously get up from the bed and sit right on this seat and start talking, oh my God, I don't want to tell you because sometimes you all see me here and you feel like, oh, I just came from this place of all joy and all. No, sometimes I'm waking up from the bed from feeling pains all over my body. And then I sit here and I start talking and the pain disappears. I'm not saying that the pain slowly goes away. I'm saying the pain disappears. Um, recently, about two or three days ago, or was yesterday, I, I think two days ago, I don't know, like for the past, I think one week or something, I've been coughing like funny. And I just kept telling myself that, Lord, this ain't going to work, you know. And then I noticed that when I'm talking, it's like it comes, comes like so strong, like I have to cough. So I'm like, when I was sitting on the bed yesterday, it was worse or two days ago. Either yesterday or two days ago, it was worse. I was like, so I was like, okay, maybe I'm just going to tell the people on the chapter a day that this is what is happening. And so would I have to wait until this gets done? And I asked myself, so you're giving this thing a chance, like you're giving it upper hand. And then I was, it was just increasing by the time it was close to a chapter a day. I was looking at the time and I was just literally freaking out. I'm like, God, what do you want me to do now? He says, Cast that thing out and go do what you have to do, baby girl. And I was like, Lord, this thing is out. I don't care where it's coming from. I curse it. I pray that it should not, it should not happen to me again and everything. I sat on here. In my head, I was contemplating that if I start feeling as to cough or something, what would I do? You know, like the word was just coming fear. Is going to make things stay where they are. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of boldness and of a sound mind. And I just kept talking and talking and talking. I don't know when I got finished. And I'm here today talking. Before now, I was coughing and coughing and coughing and I was feeling bad. I told myself that I'm not going to miss a chapter a day for nothing. I don't care what the enemy is playing, but it's not working with me. You should try something else. A chapter a day is something that God knows that we're going to keep doing till the end. We're not going to miss. The two times we missed, there was no internet. But it felt like I'd killed somebody. <laughs> it felt like I'd murdered somebody literally. Just because I could not come for a chapter a day. Is that serious? It's something that God has given me the grace to do. It's God. You're so consistent. It is God. I can't do this on my own. If it was on my own, then I would still be consistent on my YouTube channel. If it was on my own, I would still be consistent on my TikTok. If it was on my own, I would still be consistent on my Instagram. I'm not, but I'm just consistent here. So there are some times that I'm coming from the place of contemplating whether I'm going to do a chapter a day or not. But then, but then, I see what God does. It says, and it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sway unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee goodly cities which thou buildest not. So we need to post the word of God. We need to use the word of God for every situation in our lives so that we can be able to get off these things. And God is going to bring us to that place of rest. He's going to bring us to that place of peace. When you say a prayer, when you talk about a thing, you're not bothered about it because you know God is taking care of it. Oh yeah, sometimes I used to pray and bother that much. And a house full of all good things which thou fillest not and wells digged which thou diggest not, and vineyards, and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten, and be full. 
then beware lest thou forget the Lord, the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And this is what happens a lot of times to us Christians. We've gone to the Lord, we've prayed, we've fasted, we've slept in church, we've done this and we've done that. We're praying to God, oh Lord, I need a job, or oh Lord, I need a husband, oh Lord, I need children. And then finally, the Lord blesses us with the job, the husband, the child, and then we don't have time for God anymore. Are we saying that God gives us blessings to cause us not to stay connected to him? No, we just didn't put our priorities right. And some of us didn't build enough capacity to be able to know how to handle everything and put everything in its right place. And so sometimes when we're going through some things we're going through, it's God that is actually building us and pruning us to be able to have enough capacity to be able to carry the next level. God is not just going to give you your next level. Your next level could be your, your, your promotion at your work. Your next level could be your, your getting married. Your next level could be your getting a child. Your next level could be your getting um, um, a, a scholarship, an opportunity. Your next level could be you traveling out of your country. Your next level could be just name it, whatever it is. Your next level could be that thing. But God wants to build your capacity. So you're praying so hard. You're fasting. You're crying. You're singing. And the Lord is doing nothing. It feels like the Lord is silent. No, he's not silent. He's bringing out the best in you. So that when you get to that place, you are not going to forget God. He says, then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. After you've eaten, you've become full. After you've reached that place place of seeming rest maybe your place of rest right now what is keeping you worried what is keeping you bothered what is making you restless is the fact that you don't have a job god gives you a job now you are at your place of rest and then you forget god you are at your place of enjoyment and then you forget god is that how it's supposed to be no That's not how it's supposed to be. But a lot of us, a whole lot of us Christians, that's how it happens. You get married now. You're in the choir. You're no longer in the choir. You're no longer going for choir practice. You're no longer ministering. Does it mean that your ministry ended after you got married? No. God gave you a ministry. A ministry is for a lifetime. You're still supposed to be a music minister. But it looks like a lot of people these days, they join the choir, they join all these things because they want to be seen and then have an opportunity. When you now get married, you stop that. Was it truly a calling or you're just doing it to be seen? Everything has its consequences. Someday it's going to catch up with you. They always say one shall chase a thousand and two ten thousand. There are some people that you connect with and two of you will not even be able to chase a thousand. Because you're so not for each other. You're so not for each other. But some of us will listen. Impatience is going to finish us. I remember saying this sometime, but most times people always use those taglines of what you're going through to kind of be insultive or not listen to a message that God is speaking to them. And um, I remembered one of my i think my brothers was talking to somebody and the person was saying that oh this is something i can't remember what it was but i remember at some time i was saying something to some people and they say oh it's because you're not married yet it's because you don't have children how is it connected i'm telling you the truth and you're not liking the truth and you don't want to accept the truth and you're telling me that it's because i'm not married how is it connected Yeah, I was bringing to light the fact that people, church service time is actually even later than work time, right? So yeah, I'm telling this lady that you can't tell me that it's because I don't have children or I don't have this. That's why I'm coming to church early and you, you're coming late. I said, you're not going to tell me that same thing when it's work. 
and you go to work earlier than you go to church church used to start when i was in church then where i was talking to this lady i think church used to start at 8 30 either 8 30 or 9 o'clock oh mr elvis i need to talk to you i just remembered it's either 8 30 or 9 o'clock and people still come late and then you want to ask they'll be telling you oh i have children oh i'm married oh i did this you're still married and you go to work which you're supposed to be at work like seven o'clock for some people so some people 7 30 the latest they take care of children they make sure the children go to school because the children also have to be in school in time they make sure the children are in school in time and they get to work in time so let's just be fair to them work starts at eight o'clock and they manage to do every single thing and get the children ready for school, prepare the children's lunch, prepare their snacks and prepare everything and prepare their lunch and prepare the husband's snacks and everything, the husband's lunch. And they make it to work in time. But no, since God is not here physically to deal with us, it's okay to act anyhow when it comes to God. See, there are lots of things we're doing here that humanly speaking, people are going to understand with you. I could humanly say, oh yeah, you really need to rest. You need time out and all. But why would you not do that to one of the days for work? Like, why can't you just wake up and go to work and then when you go late and then you tell your boss that you have children and you're married? Why can't you do that to your boss? No. It's easier to do it to God because God is not there physically. But God is hurting because he's seeing all that we're doing. And he says that thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shall swear by, and shall swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods or the gods of the people which are round about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God amongst you. He's jealous. He's jealous. You can, for a more mortar, keep to time. But you tell God that, Lord, this is a time that I'm coming to have fellowship with you. And you can't keep to it. And you're given an excuse. You know when we stand before the judgment throne, all these excuses were given. They no go ho wata. They no go ho wata. So let's stop giving all these excuses. It's not helping any of us. It's not helping us. You Sometimes we find these excuses because, humanly speaking, there'll be someone that will connect with you. There'll be someone that will say, oh, yes, somehow I see your point. You're really going through much. Yes, God will understand. It's a lie. It's a lie. That statement, God will understand, is a lie from the pit of hell. To make you complacent about the things of God. Things that you are supposed to take seriously. Things that you're supposed to be fervent about. You're not fervent about. You're just nonchalant about them. And then this, the people are deceiving you all around the place. You're doing your best. I cannot come and keep myself. Huh? Abby? But when is your boss? You can come and key yourself. But when it's God, you cannot come and key yourself. God understands. Your boss doesn't understand. Please, let's snap out of this thing here. A lot of us, were making lots of mistakes because we have people that are pitting us into our destruction. Oh yeah, I understand with you, princess. This person really hurt you. So you should deal with them. I understand you, princess. So this, 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 this. No. You know in your heart of hearts that it is not the right thing to do. You know in your heart of hearts that this finger you're pointing at this person has nothing to do with that particular stupid act that you took. That stupid decision that you took. You know. Sorry, people. You know. You know all of this. You know that that's how it is. But you're there doing your own that you want to do, any other you want to do. And you're claiming that, oh, is this thing, is that thing, is this thing, is that thing. It's not true. It's not true. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. It says, God is a jealous God. So stop doing these things that you're doing. You're hurting God. You're hurting God. Lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy this from all the face of the earth. 
Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye, as ye tempted him in Massa. A lot of times we tempt God. We put him in this awkward situations. We saw a lot of times when God wanted to deal with the children of Israel. And Moses was the one standing the gap. He was the one standing the gap. So most of the times when we don't do these things that God is telling us to do, when we don't follow his statutes and his precepts, we actually fall into a lot of trouble. We get into a whole lot of trouble. Serious trouble. And his wrath can come upon us. We don't want that, do we? We've seen the people that the wrath of God fell upon them. Like the Egyptians, Pharaoh and the rest. We don't want that to happen to us, do we? Basically, it's not like God does evil things. He actually lets the devil. He's now, he's covering his out. He's covering over your life. He's taking off. And then, you get dealt with. Any Tom, Dick and Harry can deal with you the way they want to. You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he had commanded thee. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord your father, the Lord had swayed unto your fathers. It gives you all that is necessary for you to go and possess, for you to go and be the person that God wants you to be when you obey his commands. And you stay in right standing with him. He makes it possible for you to be victorious, for you to be conquerors, for you to be able to get to that place where he wants you to go to. When you're yielded to him. To cast out all thine enemies from before thee as the Lord had spoken. These are some of the benefits. When you want to talk to your children, when you want to teach them all these things, why they should follow the precepts, why they should obey God, why they should be connected to God, you tell them all these advantages and the disadvantages. You tell them all the benefits and all the consequences. So asking why is not a bad thing. It's a good thing rather. It makes people learn better and take informed decisions based on the information they have. And when thy son asked thee in time to come, saying, What mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord God had commanded you? Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's born men in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders great and sore upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence, that he might bring us in, to give us the land which he sway unto our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all the statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. It's God's preservation. You know, so why, why did they have to tell? Because the children would definitely ask. So why are you keeping all these statues? Why are you doing this? When the generation of the asking why, 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 and we're getting irritated instead. Meanwhile, God had said, God had already made us understand here that the season of why's are going to come. So when your children ask you the why's, give them the reason. God didn't get mad here. God didn't get angry. He rather said, okay, this is what you're going to tell them. So each time, study the word of God and always go to God and, and tell him, Lord, please give me the wisdom, give me the understanding to be able to tell my children the why. When they ask me any why, oh Lord, Father, be able to give me wisdom to be able to answer them, be able to give me wisdom to be able to give them right counsel. Rather than get angry, they want to know. And if you don't tell them, they will know from anywhere. The internet is there. Their friends are there. Their teachers are there. People in the streets, people in the car, you just don't know what is happening these days. They are drivers, they are nannies, they are just any other person might teach them. We don't want that, do we? And it's for preservation. So they had to tell them because they had experienced something. And from that experience, they know exactly what is happening to them. And to this day, they were leaving the day that they'll be telling their children and giving them the reason why they're doing all that they're doing. It will be showing that they are experiencing it because God did it. Because God had set them free. Because God had made it possible. So you see, you have to learn it to be able to tell it. 
If you don't know it, if you don't learn it, if you've not experienced it, you can't be able to comfortably tell it. So tell it. Experience it. Study the word of God. Have a personal relationship with God so that you'll be able in the day to tell your children, to transfer all this to those around you. When they're talking about children, it's not only your biological children. Their nephews, nieces, their sisters, brothers that are all around you and they need the word of God. They need to understand these statutes. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. People, it is for our good. Every single time it's for our good. I keep telling us every single day. I'll repeat it over and over and over to whoever cares to listen. Our doing what God commands doesn't make God more God. And our not doing it doesn't make him less God. God is God all by himself. Our doing or not doing actually blesses us or gives us consequences that we can't even bear. Mm -hmm. That's how it works, people. Don't get it twisted. That's how it works. So it's not about God. Like, God is God. He tells us all those things for our own good. Take it or leave it. It's up to you. So you see, that's how it works. And that's it for our chapter today. today. Thank you for being a part of the show. We're really grateful. I always get to say I love you so very much, but God loves you way, way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell to get all our updates. If you need the audio Bible read by me, just let me know in my inbox by saying, Princess, I need the audio Bible. Mr. Elvis Chair, I need to talk to you, please. Don't forget. And then if you also... We're hoping to put it on other social media platforms soonest. I hope that we can get it on there. But for now, it's just on our YouTube channel. Okay. And for those who want it on the YouTube channel that is just strictly Bible, you can let me know. And for those who want it on the um, YouTube channel that is my general YouTube channel, that's fine too. You know, I had to um, do a new YouTube channel where it's just the Bible stuff. So that it's just Bible and people don't get distracted with other things. If they really don't want like other things like a day in my life, like fun time in school, like words of encouragement and all those things. If they don't want it mixed up in the Bible studies, fine. There's a channel for that as well. Lord, we thank you for your word. Help us to be doers of your word, not hear us only. Make us live in a peace of right of man so that people see your good works in our lives and glorify our Father who is in heaven. I want to know more about you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because I know you've heard and answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless those who are starting their day today. Let their day be beautiful. And for those who are half of their day, I pray you bless them. And for those who are about to sleep like us, you give them sound sleep and sweet dreams to the glory of your name. Visions and dreams, just like you said. Young men shall dream dreams and old men shall say visions. Lord, let that be a practical reality in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Until tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. Deuteronomy chapter 7 is our next Bible party chapter. So read ahead of time and let's come back here tomorrow and have a swell time. Mwah.